What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lady Natasha Daniels. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to the Go With God podcast. Uh, listen, I'm so glad that you guys decided to stop on in and hear what we were going to talk about for today. Um, it's always a privilege, always an honor. Um, and I'm just blessed to have a platform right now where I can kind of talk about different challenges that I've faced in my life because I know a lot of us are kind of going through a lot of different things, maybe more than we would like to admit. So for me, this is a great opportunity to just kind of, you know, take my platform and, and let's have real candid conversations. You guys already know who have been listening for the past few weeks, uh, for the past few months. You guys already know what it's about. Um, this is really a open dialogue. I use my life <laughs> to keep me out of trouble and to keep what I may say out of trouble. Um, I use my life and the situations that I've gone, to, gone through and I'm just real transparent about them. Um, and my hope and my prayer is that with this transparency that we can, I can help so many other people. Um, so as always, you know, for those who are new to the go with God podcast, we always start with the scripture because that's the purpose of it. You know, it's, it's one thing to have an opinion, but it's another thing to really kind of delve and and dive into what did God say about it? And am I willing to follow what he desires? A lot of times we're not. Um, so that's kind of where I've been for a large portion of my life. You know, we battle with God all the time. And because of that, we delay a lot of things on our own because we just don't want to. We're stubborn. Um, and so with the Go With God podcast, it's an opportunity for all of us to really start to, you know what? Dang, like I really did go through that and be OK with the fact that you went through it because there's scripture for that. You know, God is going to help us get through all of these jagged areas in our life. So uh, today, if you haven't read the title already, it's about forgiveness or not to forgive. This is a huge topic. Um, and one thing that I'm really starting to realize is that a lot of people don't forgive. It's very difficult to forgive. And then we have people who are multiple offenders, who, meaning you're constantly offending me. Um, and it makes it even that much more difficult to forgive. So I thought it'd be great to kind of have a, a discussion to forgive or not to forgive, because I think every Christian and every individual kind of goes through that phase or that stage where it's like, nah, I'm not forgiving nobody. Or, you know, I forgive, but I ain't forget. And um, so <laughs> we've all been there. And, and some things and some people are a lot easier to forgive than others. But I really think it's important. What does God say about forgiving and not forgiving? And of course, I'm going to be using my life as an example. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Dear God, I say thank you and I honor you and I worship your name. I ask them right now, God, you would forgive us for all of our sins, that you would keep us close to your heart, that you would let us know your intentions, God, and that you would show us how to apply your living word. For not only are you living, God, but the word is living. And for that, we say thank you. Anything that we may need, God, it's in the word. So I thank you for giving us the opportunity to really kind of delve deep into it. And I pray that you will be glorified in all of it. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and we pray. Amen. All right, so I have a couple of scriptures for us today. Um, you know, if you guys got your Bibles, you know, <clears throat> it's not a full on Bible study, um, but it is an opportunity that I never want somebody to be like, oh, she just gave her opinion. No, I'm going to give you my opinion and my story, but I'm also going to give you scripture for it. So Matthew um, 6, 14 and 15, um, a lot of us should know it because this is the prayer. The, the This is the scripture where you can find the Lord's prayer at. Um, and of course, you know, we grew up learning the Lord's prayer. Um, but I did want to kind of read the scripture starting at Matthew six fourteen, Matthew six fourteen and 15. And it says, for if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive your transgressions. Um, I also wanted to jump over to a, another scripture. And that's going to be Mark 25. I know I got a lot of scripture today. Uh, and whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone so that your father also who's in heaven may forgive you and your trespasses. In other words, when you're praying, you know, make sure that you're forgiving people. So that way the communication stays open. Um, and for a long time, I didn't really understand what that scripture meant. But I'm hoping that, you know, today we're able to kind of delve into it. So that way we can get some some clarity. So, you know, in my own life, um, one of I've never really um, had an issue growing up with forgiveness. Uh, anybody who really knows me would be like, Tasha is so gullible. So for me, I never really growing up had a problem with asking for forgiveness or with forgiving people. Um, it wasn't really until I got married. 
uh, that I really had a difficult time with forgiveness. And let me be clear, it wasn't that I wasn't forgiving, but my tone in forgiveness was anger. Okay. So, so let me go ahead and break that down for you guys. So maybe, you know, Jasper, those who who have been on the podcast know my husband, Jasper, and I, I always get permission to talk about, um, our life, you know, before I just start ripping off about our life. So I always do that. Um, and one of the things that during our relationship, um, you know, when Jasper does anything at that time, especially for the first couple of years, I would get extremely zero to a thousand. I would go zero to a thousand and just lose, <laughs> lose my mind on telling him how I felt about his life. And um, for a little while there, I felt like it was the efficient way to communicate. But what I soon learned is that he does not respond to yelling. Now, for some of us who grew up in toxic environments, we can attest to the fact that, you know, being careful of familiarity because it re- it makes us insensitive to what's right and what's wrong. So what I mean by that is I grew up in a household where, you know, we didn't speak softly. We spoke loudly but also where there was a level of frustration and anger because of the situation that my parents were going through, which was a divorce. Um, But also just, you know, the frustrations of trying to raise three kids. My mom did a great job with it, but it came with its its share of frustrations. Um, So yelling was not uncommon in my house. Fussing, being angry, it was not uncommon in my house, but in my husband's house, It was very uncommon, very far and few between. So putting the two of us together, what I thought was normal behavior was extremely, um, you know, detrimental to my husband. And so as our relationship kind of progressed, uh, Jasper would do things that were habitual. And my response was to yell. Now, I would forgive. And it's not just yelling, but there was a rage or there was an anger. I never put my hands on him or anything like that, you know, but maybe a cuss out here and there um, or or uh, degrading, belittling. Um, and then after I was done, I would act as if, you know, everything was just fine. So to me, that was forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness was I got it out my system I did what I needed to do and now you just take it you eat it and you learn from it what I didn't know is that I really had not forgiven him I had just released the pressure of how I felt emotionally about what he did all right so stay with me and the reason why I knew I didn't forgive him is because there would always be a snare or a snag If there was a situation that resembled what caused the initial offense. So let's say um, an example would be, and Jasper and I will get more and more in depth about the things that we've kind of gone through in our marriage. um, But we'll do that on, 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 on podcasts where we're actually together. Um, But let's just give an example. Like Jasper did something like wash the clothes and not put them in the dryer. Okay. So I fuss and yell about him not washing the clothes or washing the clothes and not putting them in the dryer because anybody who does laundry knows that they'll they'll get sour. And so I would yell and fuss and scream and I would feel better, but I was degrading him or I was belittling him or I was making him feel like a child with my response, but I felt better. But I had not forgiven him for the fact that he was souring my clothes Because anytime he would start to do laundry, it wasn't really a teaching moment. It was a reprimand on what to do and or what not to do. It wasn't coming from a place of love. It wasn't coming from a place of compassion. It was coming from a wound or it was coming from the remembrance of something that he did not do right. So let's make it into a more more detrimental um, kind of thing or a kind of tone, you know, there was a point in time where, uh, pastor Jay and I, when he got sick, um, we had a hard time keeping up with bills. So you guys may see me now, you know, but three, four, five years ago, my account was in the negative, almost every paycheck. I was living paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, I thank God that I've kind of grown beyond living from paycheck to paycheck, but that doesn't mean that it's not still hard. And for those who wonder, yes, uh, I may be a gospel artist, but I have a nine to five. (laughs) Uh, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. Um, you know, until God calls you into full-time ministry, you need to be working. (laughs) That's a whole nother topic though for a whole nother day. And that goes for musicians, singers, pastors, 
you know, you should not be a burden to, to people, no matter who you are, no matter what you are. But that also doesn't mean that you don't deserve honor and, or that you don't uh, deserve a reward or wages for what you do, but you have to know what's a hireling, um, and what's full-time ministry because they're two different things. All right. So enough of that. Um, so during that time, you know, I'm doing ministry and all that good stuff, but we're not only living paycheck to paycheck, we can't afford everything. My account is constantly in the negative. I'm constantly getting hit with late charges. And I gave pastor Jay the charge of taking care of the cars. And, um, I told him to take care of the cars, you know, pay the cars. If you need, if you need money, just let me know, you know, you take care of them or, you know, with the money that he was getting, you know, please pay for the cars. We had two cars and long story short, I got a call from the repossession company, um, or really from, from the dealership, not only trying to call to make paint, not, not only trying to call to get their funds, but to pretty much let us know, Hey, we're coming to take the cars. We haven't received payments in two to three months. And I will never forget. I was livid because it was bad enough. We were living paycheck to paycheck, but now there's a debt that's being created where I have no way of getting out of this. Now for me, I needed a car because I was working, couldn't afford to take the bus and the train. And for some people, they may be like, well, you could have taken the train or the bus. Listen, let's be honest. The bus and the train, when you got to go somewhere every single day, it's almost as much as a car payment, depending on your credit. So for me, I really couldn't afford it. And because Pastor Jay was also sick, um, I needed to have that flexibility of being able to come and go as I needed. And I'll never forget, I was not only livid, but I I lit him up, man, lit him up. And ever since then, I hadn't trusted him to pay the car because out of fear, um, I felt like our cars were going to get taken um, and I didn't have the money to make it up. And so I carried a lot of resentment in my heart for his abilities to provide. Um, and it wasn't just that, you know, there were some other things, um, you know, but that's a real life example from my life. And I realized that I was not really forgiving him. I was once again, just alleviating the pressure so that I could move. And I believe that a lot of us are doing that. You know, we're getting it off of our chest and calling it forgiveness, but then You know, the truth of the matter is you do still remember. How do I know that? Because the world is going around saying, you know, forgive, but don't forget. And it seems like that colloquialism is actually the way or the standard that the church is living by. And it's not right. And the truth of the matter is, let's be honest, you may be moving, but you're not living. That scar is still killing you and eating you up inside. When you see that person, you're still getting a level of anxiety when you're seeing that person or you're still feeling like, you know what? Ooh, ooh. if it wasn't for Jesus, no, like there should be no remembrance of the offense. Stay with me. There should be no remembrance of of the offense. Now, some people would say that that's naive. Oh man. Some people would say that's naive, but I would like to challenge you today that if we're called to be imitators of Christ, how is it naive for us, but it's the right thing to do by God's standards to forgive you when you offend him. In other words, every day you offend God. Let's be honest, whether you offended him one time that day or 50, 60 times that day, whether it was accidental or whether it was intentional, you offend God and he forgives you automatically, but you put up a, nah, but I'm not going to be naive to it. You're not going to use me. You're not going to abuse me. You start putting all these standards in place rather than separating the person from the sin. And I know that for some of us, it's like, well, how is that forgiveness? You know, because Tyler Perry told us, you know, that forgiveness was to free yourself. Actually, yeah, it is to free yourself, but it's really to free the person from the offense. And when we start to look at the scripture of Matthew 6 and 14, we can really begin to understand what God and, and what what Matthew is saying in the text. But Jesus is principle. Listen, you have to forgive Because what I'm getting ready to do, I'm able to sit on the right hand of our father because the work will forever be complete. 
It's you who are walking into the progression of your complete stage. In other words, faith is not really me hoping for something to happen. It's the confidence that it's already happened and I just have to walk into what's already prepared. Prepare me a table before my enemies. Those things are already, I go to prepare you a place. Those things are already prepared, even though they sound like they're in present form. Because if that was the case, why does Jesus sit? Okay. If Jesus, it would never say in the scripture in Hebrews uh, 10, and I think it says it in another place or two, but in Hebrews 10, it talks about that. Jesus is able to sit on the right hand of the father because the work is complete. So I challenge you guys that if Jesus is able to forgive us, why can't you forgive someone and forget about the offense? Now, for some of us, we'll be like, cause I ain't Jesus. I'm just human. Yeah. But God tells us to imitate Christ. The goal is to walk with Holy spirit on the inside of you and to work or walk toward not just salvation. I think a lot of us have limited our Christianity to only salvation. And while salvation is wonderful, that is the, the first point step of you walking into who you're supposed to be. You're not going to be able to walk into that new creation or that new creature, that new mindset cloaked in sin. So you need salvation in order to wash your eyes and to wash your ears and to cleanse your heart so that you can see the work of Christ in and on your life. So what does that have to do with forgiveness? It's very, very simple. God says you got to forgive people. Otherwise I'm not going to forgive you. Because if you don't forgive, then you make my word a lie. You make God's word a lie because you're imitating him. You're representing him. So your character has to show and has to be that of, wow, I'm going to forgive you the same way God forgives. And that's the job of Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they know that you are still in sin nature, meaning that you are still walking in this earth and you do have the influence or potential influence of having the enemy always up and down your back until you reach glory. You're going to have enemy all the enemy always on your trail. However, God has sent you a comforter to help you produce the fruit of the spirit every single day, every single moment, joy, love, peace, kind, long, long suffering. Um, that's the job of Holy spirit. So when we say things like I can't, or God was, when we belittle the power of God that lives on the inside of us, don't you realize that you're saying, God, you know, I, I, I null and void what you did on the earth. In other words, when you say things like, I'm not Jesus and, you know, he was God and this and this and that and the power of God, you know, it's really only for Jesus. You have to understand that what you're saying is that I am not worthy to receive what Christ has freely given. And because I am not worthy to receive what Christ has fully given, Holy Spirit cannot work the way he needs to work because you do not want to see all that you are in Christ Jesus. We are literally slapping God in the face and saying, God, what you really did was just save yourself. Because when you start to pull yourself out or for, or out from underneath the cloak of salvation, that's really what you're saying is God. I thank you for dying for me. And I thank you for rising for me, but I don't believe you enough that we can live according to your standard. And for some of us, we really have to start getting back to God. I'm sorry that I have belittled your power or that I've only made your power good enough to cleanse and not good enough to live. So here we are with forgiveness. Do I forgive or do I not forgive? And the answer is that you've got to forgive. I wanted to pose it to you this way. In Hebrews 10, it talks about the law. The law in the Old Testament was only a shadow of the good things that are coming, but they weren't the realities. In other words, when it talks about forgiveness and atonement, Old Testament calls it atonement. 
And what that pretty much meant was, listen, after Adam and Eve did what they did and got kicked out of the garden, the only way that you can even attempt to be in my presence is through atonement. But here's the thing about atonement that I love that Hebrews kind of breaks down for us. And it clearly is showing that atonement still reminds you of what you did. How do you say that, Tasha? Easy. Because I'm atoning because I remember the sin I did. Okay, so for some of you guys who are like, what? Let me say it again in a different way so that you'll understand. You would have no need to, to atone if you forgot why you sinned. But God asked in the law that you would sacrifice for sin so that you can be reminded that you are sinful and so God could cleanse the sin through sacrifice. But the question that is being asked in Hebrews, I thought was a wonderful question is, what's the point of you constantly sending sacrifices to God to ask him for forgiveness if without Christ you will never be clean? That's the challenge that's posed in Hebrews. And I went to Hebrews chapter 10 specifically because it gives this beautiful outlaw of why Jesus came, why uh, this aspect of Jesus coming and the work of redemption. So when he's talking, you know, when you start to pay attention to like verse um, two and three, it says those sacrifices are annual reminders of sin. And it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Because you're always going to be sinning. Let me, <laughs> you're always going to be sinning. Now, let me put a, a quarter in there. It is possible for you to go a day or go through time, even if it's months, for you not to sin. That's why there's sins of commission and omission, sins that you know of and sins that you don't know of. But the intentionally sin, yes, you may be able to not do that. But because of your ignorance there, you run the risk at all times of sinning. And you have to understand that just because you knowingly did not sin does not mean that you did not unknowingly sin. So when, 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 when Paul is talking in Hebrews, well, let me, for those of you who, who are listening to this and you guys are Bible scholars, they assume that because the way that the text is written, it is Paul who also wrote Hebrews. But the truth of the matter is there is not a definitive author in the book of Hebrews. So let me let me regress that statement and just say the author of Hebrews in chapter 10. Um, if you read through verse eight and verse nine, Jesus says, listen, I'm going to come and I'm going to do the will of the father. And what Jesus does that's so amazing as it relates to forgiveness is he sets aside the first law to establish the next one. In other words, I'm going to put aside or fulfill the law of sacrifice. I will be the lamb that is sacrificed so that you no longer have to sacrifice an animal. I will be the lamb that is pure so that when my blood spills, it can redeem everybody. And I only see my blood and not your sin. Whew, Jesus. So what does this have to do with forgiveness? I'm so glad that you asked. Forgiveness. The best way to describe what forgiveness is, is the separation of the penalty of sin. And I've only got a few more minutes, so I need you guys to catch it. Forgiveness is the separation of the penalty of sin. That's why I went the way that I went in talking about what Jesus did. So what does that mean for you in your day-to-day -day life? Real forgiveness is not saying I forgive you, but I, but I don't forget. Real forgiveness is not saying I forgive you, but I still harbor all of the hurt that came with it. Real forgiveness is I forgive you and I separate you from the fact that you sinned and the penalty that should be given to you because of the sin. Ah, Jesus, are you with me? Hear me clearly. So forgiveness says, I forgive you because Jesus forgave me, right? That's the first step in it. The second step is, as I'm forgiving you, I am separating what you did from who God called you to be. Whew. And the third step is I'm not going to penalize you for your sin because Christ does not penalize me. Huh. Are you guys getting this? So for those of us who say that we have not forgiven or, or you know, the, 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 the number one statement is, you know, I'm a forgive, but I ain't going to forget. Then you didn't forgive. You did not forgive. 
that stain and that unforgiveness in your life still runs through your thoughts and it still runs through your heart and it still runs through your emotions. It still runs through how you treat people. It still runs through how you forgive, how you love, how you form relationships. So yes, you may be like, you know, I ain't going to mess with you no more, but I forgave you. Did you forgive or did you not forgive? And based on what my Bible says, you really didn't forgive because every time you see them, you still see the sin that they did against you, the offense that they did against you. Every time you look at them and you see them, you claim that you forgave them, but you have not yet separated how you punish them because of how they made you feel. And I'm not talking about punishment, like I'm yelling at them and I'm screaming at them. No, but you don't open your heart up to them anymore. You don't open up your mind to them anymore. You do not see them in the new place. You see them strictly in the offended place. And for those of us who are worried about being abused and those of us who are worried about being neglected and those of us who are worried about those things, listen, in other podcasts, you guys will hear it if you haven't already. I have been through those stages, not just in my marriage, in other relationships, family and friends alike and boyfriends too. But God will always provide a way of escape. It's not up to you to escape. And for some people, you may think that that's a little controversial, but hear me and hear me clearly. When you break from something, you have to start asking yourself the question, did I break because I couldn't handle it or did I break because I had peace about it? And I can't say that for everybody because Holy Spirit will convict you accordingly. But just because somebody hurt you doesn't mean that you have a right to not forgive them. You have a right and you ought to forgive them so that your father can forgive you so that your father can hear your prayers so that you can continue to imitate the fruits of Christ. Now we can go into a whole nother topic as to, well, should I be in a relationship with them? Listen, if you were to be honest, the tolerance and grace that I have for the people who may have hurt you is going to be different in the type of relationship you're in. In other words, we're not on the same levels with what I have grace for. So I can't give you a blanket statement that you shouldn't forgive them if they cheat. You shouldn't forgive them if they cuss you out. I can't say that because what's, what's, what's a grace for me may not be a grace for you, but grace does abound. And it's up to you to submit yourself to Holy Spirit with every moment of offense and ask God, how do I deal with this? Do I forgive or do I not forgive? So I pray that this lesson really helped you guys. I pray that my story really helped you guys. If you guys want an update as to how Pastor Jay and I are doing, I'm doing way, way better with forgiving. Way, way better where I don't look at him based on the pain lens. The pain that he calls me, I don't look at him in that way. There are some wounds and some things that are that are that are harder than others, you know, but at the end of the day, I ask God, I want to learn how to forgive the right way, not forgive with conditions. But I want to be able to forgive the way you do, where you do something to me and I can still see Christ in you. And or if you're a non a non-believer and you hurt me, I can still look at you. I can smile at you and I can love on you. I can still get you some food or I can still have a conversation with you. How deep of a relationship it goes, I ask Holy Spirit so that way I don't entangle myself in something that really is seasonal. And and that's a whole nother topic about friends. Just because I hang out with you one day doesn't mean that we friends. And for a lot of us in church, we're going to have to get past that. You need to ask Holy Spirit, is this a friendship, an associate, um, 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 a colleague, is this a mentor or is this somebody who is just passing in the wind? Is this just an angel unaware that I'm entertaining and I'm just moving on? You don't need to take that up on your own because you don't know what's ahead in that relationship. So get some wisdom, get some discernment about your relationships. But one thing that's clear and one thing that's sure is forgiveness is a must. Do not hold on to those things that make you cringe and look at somebody with a crazy face. You got to learn to forgive. And for those of you who are on here, you're like, nah, Lady T, I don't agree with you on that. That's okay. As you mature in Christ, you're going to want to please him. 
And because you're going to want to please him, you're going to feel the difference between forgiveness and unforgiveness. Every time you go around the person that you don't forgive, that anxiety that builds up because I've been there, that sweaty palm that builds up, that hurt in your gut or your your immediate attitude change. One day you're going to grow up and you're going to say, this is ridiculous. I don't want to be like this no more. I want to come into your presence and smile. Even though you did me wrong, I'll let the Lord fight that battle. I'll let the Lord take vengeance out if need be. And for the non-believer who may be listening today, listen, I understand, you know, sometimes you just like F the person and you write them off. But everybody's got a bad day. Not everybody has a good day. And yes, while some offenses hurt more than others, If you had a bad day, wouldn't you want somebody to give you some grace too? Forgive. Don't always let it be an option of, hmm, like they used to do in the cartoons where you picked off the pedal. He loved me. He loved me not. He loved me. He loved me not. He loved me. He loved me not. Oh, don't do that no more. Don't choose between should I forgive or shouldn't I forgive? Pick the first option and forgive. Dear God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this podcast. Thank you for the transparency. I pray that this really, really helps somebody today. And I pray that they're able to see, listen, I may not like everything that everybody does, but I have a right to forgive. I have a duty to forgive. I have a duty to separate who they are and the sin that they've committed because that's what Christ has done for me. So for that, Father, I say thank you. I love you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed um, today's podcast. It's always going to be like this. We're going to talk about real stuff all the time. We're not going to be able to grow if we're not talking about real stuff. If you haven't already, please like, please share. Um, You guys can go on my Facebook page, Natasha Daniels Music, um, or you guys can go on my website. Um, Also, if you can, please, please, please uh, share it. It, it, you know, I'm in the Apple store, I'm in Spotify, please start to add this stuff to you guys as playlist. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Google play, uh, you know, start adding this to you guys as rotation, start sending it out to people. I'm sure somebody needs to hear this stuff. Um, and as always, if need be, listen, you guys can go into go with God podcast at yahoo.com. Um, and send me an email. Let's talk. Let's chat. I'm still working on, trying to be more on there with uh, social media and Instagram and TikTok and stuff. But for those who may or may not know, you know, I still have a (laughs) nine to five on top of ministry, on top of my ministry, on top of being a wife, on top of being a friend, godmother. I have so many different hats. Um, So listen, reach out to me via email. Um, You know, the goal is to get bigger and better. Uh, GWG podcast at yahoo.com. I will answer your inquiries, your questions, your comments, your concerns. And if you guys have, have topics, let me know about them. So that way I could definitely start adding them into the rotation and or into the show. So as always, I love you guys. Um, be blessed. And of course, in all things, make sure that you go with God later. Later.